video is a response to a comment I had on one of my videos um, relating to how can I something to the effect of how can I move something to a precise location and so I thought that was an interesting question I've haven't really thought about that in Blender that much because uh, most of the modeling I do is you know by eye in Blender I mean I shouldn't say most I say all of it is and I've never really bothered trying to do precise movements in Blender so for example as uh, the commenter uh, you uh, the example the commenter used was trying to move a door a precise location as you might be able to do in SketchUp where you can uh, move a door to, you know to the exact millimeter or whatever so we're gonna I'm gonna at least offer some maybe some ideas on how you might go about that now I should point out that blender does have some measuring tools let me let me go ahead and add an object here in this case I'll just make a plane because what I'm gonna try and do is work on this the problem of this trying to move a door to a precise location and so this plane will be my wall to kind of place my door on okay so we have this and okay so great let's I want to show you let's see I I want to show you the measuring tools but this is a really impromptu kind of video so it's questionable whether I'll be able to find it or not uh, where would that be? Oh, it would be over here, of course. Tools and let's see here. Grease pencil, I think. Ruler protractor. Now, I don't really know how to use this. I'm just pointing this out because it, it might be of some interest to some people to kind of research on. So there is kind of this ruler. And I've used this for just kind of getting general ideas of how large something is. Uh, but, you know, I don't really know exactly how to use it other than just that pretty much um, so yeah I just wanted to point that out that there is at least this ruler protractor thing and there might be some uh, interesting features about it or something so you know worth taking a look at I guess so maybe the first thing um, is well you know let's let's create a door now I'm not going to in this video but I should point out that and I think this is obvious to m pretty much everybody is you can change the um, dimensions of your object right here so let's say I want a door I don't really know how large I want it so I'm just going to just create some sort of random size and then maybe I'll go into edit mode um, you know what can I do to make this more of a door well you know maybe I'll just extrude it uh, backwards and then of course it looks like our normals are flipped the wrong way so I'll flip them back and I think I can delete this face and it looks like I need to flip this normal now okay so that looks Maybe these normals are flips. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have flipped them in the first place, but okay, well, whatever. We'll take care of that then. So I'll flip these back, I guess. Okay, and then so we can actually see the thing, we'll move it out in front of our wall. Okay, so now I don't know exactly where to place this on the wall. Um, it doesn't really make a difference to me. What I do need to figure out though is how can I first of all just get this door so that it's uh, at least the same level you know so it's level with the wall as far as the bottom of this door I think should be level with this wall if you want to do it correctly so how would we do that well I thought of I thought about this and this is what I kinda came up with now there obviously I'm sure there's got to be better ways to do this but this is just my first thought was uh, to select a vertice in this case okay 
I suppose you could select an edge. Uh, we could try that at some point, but let's just say we're just going to select a Versi. Now, let's say, uh, let's press Shift S, okay, and Snap. This is the Snap menu. And let's say Cursor to Selected. So, right, this is your 3D cursor right here. That little red and white checkered circle thing. <laughs> and so, if you press Shift S and then say Cursor to Selected, it's going to move the cursor exactly to where that your selection is. Now I think if you have more than one selection it'll kind of normalize that selection and kind of place it in the center of everything. So if I selected this vertice and this vertice, well let's see. And select things. Okay, what am I doing? Um, let's try this. I guess they are selected. Okay, this one's the active one. So maybe I'll just actually snap to the active one. Cursor to select. And okay, no, it did kind of normalize it. So it's it, it kind of averaged all the distances and placed it right kind of in the center of all of them because this verse C, you can't see it very well, my highlight isn't a very good color, but it's this verse C, that verse C, and that verse C selected so it kind of placed it kind of in the median area. So, okay, well, just an interesting tidbit I guess. But I want to move the 3D cursor down right here and then if I go into object mode and say object transform and then say origin uh, origin to 3D cursor. Okay, so that's going to move this origin of this object. So each object has its own origin. The, at the moment, the origin is pretty much in the center of the object, I guess you could say. So now I want to move it to my 3D cursor right here. So I'd say object transform origin to 3D cursor. Okay, so that moved the origin, as you can see, to the 3D cursor. Well, what can I do with that? Well, I'm going to do basically the same thing with this door. Okay? So let's say I select this vertice, same thing, Shift S, cursor to selected, and then go into object mode and then say object transform origin to 3D cursor. Okay? So that moves the origin of this object, our door object, to the 3D cursor. Okay? Now, let's see, this is the step. I'm trying to recall. Now actually, well yeah, so if I move the cursor back to this uh, origin, a uh, cursor, uh, let's see, I have to go in edit mode, select that vertice again, and say shift s cursor to selected. So the cursor is back here. I suppose I could have done this step second to save time, but you know, whatever. Okay, so I moved the cursor back. Now, I'm going to select this door object and say uh, Shift S and then say Selection, I believe it's this one, Selection to Cursor. Okay, perfect. So you see how it moved the origin of our door object to the location. So this is the, that, the orange dot is the origin of this door object. Um, and the cursor is right there. So it moved the origin to where the cursor is located, which is at and the cursor is located at the origin of the wall. Okay, so now we know that the door and the wall are level with each other, at least on the bottom here. Okay, which is what we want. Okay, so let's say, and also note, I should note this for sure. And I want to be in orthographic mode. Uh, you can see that um, the door is also aligned with the side of the wall, which should make sense to you. Um, okay, so, awesome. So, we want to say, like we can do in SketchUp, we move a door a certain distance to the right or the left or wherever, okay. Well, that's easy enough to do in Blender at this point. All we have to do is say, is select Grab. Okay, now, in your bottom left, well, let me kind of point out, and down in this corner right here, you'll see the kind of the, the distances you're moving on each axis uh, with respect to the object you're moving, okay? So if I press G for grab, which is like basically move, it's grab, you know, same difference. Uh, if I want, so let's say I want, I want to move this left and right, so I'll lock it on the X axis, also known as the red axis. Okay, 
So I locked it to the red axis, so now I can only move it left and right. Now, if I was in a different view, and say, you know, then it might be the Y axis, or it could even be the Z axis. Okay, so let's say I know that I know the distance I want to move. I know the distance between the edge of the wall here and the left edge of the door. Okay. So these distances in the bottom left corner, or about the bottom left, um, are relative to the origins of these objects. Okay. So. I can just type in my blender blender set my blender at least is set up in meters so let's say I'm not sure how f I guess I can let's say I want to move it point six five you know whatever like point six five zero zero meters okay well boom it's moved precisely now you actually can um, edit that number right here so you can so it looks like you can go out to the thousands I wonder if you could go further like six seven like let's see zero point six seven 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 can you go out to thousands okay so it looks like the farthest you can go is out to thousands which I think especially for a model is more than enough and there might be a way you can change how precise you can be but that should be more than enough for most people so yeah, so what we let me just to summarize what we well, you know what I don't want to quite end this video quite yet. I should show how I should how I can cut the wall, cut a hole in the wall now. Okay, so um, I'll just leave the door where it's at. Now I'll select the wall. Okay, well let me let me go a little bit slower here. So I have the door selected. I'm going to hold down shift and then select the wall, okay? So now I have two objects selected, an active object, which is the wall, and a non-active object, which is the door, okay? Now let's say, let's go to um let's see a front view here. I'm not sure if this view will work, work but we'll give it a shot. What I'm going to try and do is project the door um the outline of the door onto the wall so I can cut an opening out for it. So if you go up to tools here, um, or might, yeah, oh, okay, so I have my active object selected. I still have to do one thing, which is say press tab. So now I'm in edit mode with my wall object. Now if I press knife project, or project, I guess. So now I should have a nice. Um, cut out of in my wall. So, okay, you see that how it cut out uh, the shape of the door in the wall. So now I can delete that part of the wall. Whoops. So I delete face. Beautiful. So now my door is um, visible. Now that I cut out that part of the wall. Now I could also combine these objects at this point if I want to. So I say I can select both of them and say Alt M. Now let's see here. Maybe it's haven't done this in a while, guys. I think it's Control J. Okay, Control J to join two objects together. Press Tab, and then I can go down here to these vertices because you should note that I don't think these vertices will be uh, attached. Okay, so you can see there's two different vertices here. So if you say Select both of them. I like to be in uh, X-ray mode when I do this. Select both of them. You know you have both of them selected if all the uh, edges right here are highlighted. So you've selected both vertices and then press Alt M, which brings up the merge menu. And any of these would work because we know both of these vertices at their, uh, are at the same location. But uh, I guess the most appropriate choice would be at center. So that merges those two vertices. So that vertice should now be a single vertice. So now we can just do the same thing for the rest of these. Okay. And two more. Okay, so now this door is part of the wall. 
Now again, you don't have to do that. I'll just show you how you could combine the two if you wanted. And yeah. So that's how, one way at least, maybe, I'm sure there could be better ways, but that's at least the way I, the, the first thing that came to mind when I thought about how to, how to precisely place uh, an object with respect to another object, or just, you know, how to move something a certain precise distance, or whatever. Um, so yeah, I was making this video because it doesn't, doesn't take a whole lot of my time. I'm like I, I like I tell everybody I'm really busy this time of year. Unfortunately, um, I really wish I had more time to make videos and work on scenery and stuff. But you know, it's the way it goes. But yeah, hopefully this video might be helpful, might not be. But yeah, didn't take too much time. Too much time. So either way, <laughs> okay. See y'all later.